You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show. I, I'm Mark Wiltshire, back for another match report episode with Rich Nelson. Hi, Rich. Hey. And the match we're going to be reporting on is Asikor 3, Coops 1. Oh, la, 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 <laughs> la, la, la. Sorry, Rich, that was a low, low blow. <laughs> As you can probably hear from my voice, I'm a bit husky from hollering for the last couple of hours and then coming home to uh, record this. So we'll, we'll leave that one till the next full-length Finnish football show and maybe focus instead on uh, Montenegro Montenegro against Finland the other day, which uh, which finished with a nice 2-0 win for Finland um, in a game that, Rich, you described as absolutely bananas. Yeah, it was, um, it was strange to watch... Finland in a game like that, a lot of Finland games, I mean, for, for our history, let's be honest, but uh, in, in recent years, since, since we've all been watching, have been quite tense, quite close affairs, um, not really that many goals in them and not, not really a lot of action. Um, this one flew out of the blocks. Um, I mean, we, obviously, we, there was some talk that the game was in doubt because of the weather, it was torrential rain for the sort of 24 hours or so beforehand. Uh, Keke, who was there, kept telling us about how he had a hole in his shoes and everything got wet. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they got the game on. It rained constantly throughout. But it really, it was really chucking it down. Them, yeah. certain, certain camera angles, it looked all right. And then they go to a close-up. <laughs> oh, it was just like, almost like a sheet of water, like a waterfall, <laughs> wasn't it? I know. I tried to get a picture of it, but it just looked like I had interference. <laughs> so, like, the old TV, like, the tracking was off. But, um, That's exactly right, yeah. But um, but yeah, and 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 Finland came out. I mean, the the team they changed. They they made a couple of the changes that we we foresaw uh, after the last game. Uh, Lingman came in for Schuller. Uh, Karl Kyrinen started in place of Oni Valakari, and Oliver Antman came in for Yera Urunen. So on paper, um, oh sorry, and and Benjamin Chalman started in place of Frederick Jensen. So. Um, but on paper, Oliver Antman, who has been really good, uh, really good form for uh, Nordjylland in, in Holland, in Denmark, sorry, he came into the squad as a late replacement and uh, he was on paper at left wing back and immediately it's like, oh no, don't, don't waste him there. And um, Where, where and does he his, normally play? Normally a kind of attacking midfield, right, okay. kind of certainly a, a sort of shadow striker that's sort of mm. in, the, in the hole, to, to use the old term, but He's um, yeah, and, he, and he's come in and obviously starting from there. But um, on his debut, he's twenty one years old and looked like he just belonged. Yeah, he really, at that level. he really did. There yeah. was uh, there was this I thought in my mind of, oh, we've got another really attacking wing back. Are we leaving ourselves mm. susceptible behind, as we discussed before, with Niskanen and Alho and um, and others playing in those in those wide positions. Yeah, but there, there was a there was a kind of sight that the the four remaining defenders became more of a back four. So Frederick Jensen came across to the left, and Alha dropped a little uh, bit deeper Richard, than he Richard had. Jensen. Oh, sorry, Richard Jensen. Yeah. Um, and then um, from the attackers as well, there was a little bit more tracking back. So there was a bit more cover. So Chalman wasn't necessarily playing. At, at the top either so there was a little bit more of a balance to the team it wasn't quite sort of all out down the wings um but i mean the, the kind of main story of the first half i mean uh, both teams had, had plenty of chances finland had more so but i mean even montenegro had one had a good one from outside the box that Prodetsky had to tip over but um the main story was uh the amount of yellow cards uh, yeah. montenegro had well five yellows including sort of one of those the second one for red within 19 minutes yeah, of the right. game. Uh, the first three were all for fouls on, on Dame Puki. And it reminded me of that World Cup game of a couple of years ago where, um, I might be longer, I think it was, was it Colombia or, or Chile came out with the intention of fouling Neymar and yeah. n- nobbling him, basically. And it looked like this was the kind of plan just to get at Puki. But, um, but uh, Thomas Savic uh, got sent off. Then Stefan Jovetic, who I forgot still playing, um, he got a booking for dissent and he, he got taken off. And they made uh, three substitutions then, Montenegro, uh, by the half hour mark. Yeah, it was, it was really something. I, I made a note uh, and I said it to Satu and Topias at home here. 
um, that there's there's puddles. There's so much rain that there's puddles forming on the pitch, and it's going to start affecting the play. Mm-hmm. And the referee needs to just take that into account because if players are slipping and sliding, we don't want players getting too many yellow cards and getting sent off early. Mm-hmm. And um, and Satu said, "Oh, but isn't it fun when they get sent off early? Like, isn't it mm. an advantage?" And I said, "Well, not if they just sit back and defend." Mm. And not not four minutes later, there was a lunge. It wasn't because of the water; it was just a lunge. And uh, and like you said, he was Thomas Thomas Savage was uh, was off. Yeah, and um, and I think that there was, you know, when he said that the potential of the damage to the game, not only having ten men and and. And Montenegro really were looking still, you know, they, they, I don't think they were in any danger of being relegated from the group because of the way that results fell. But, but even so, you know, it was a home game for them. They wanted to, to do well. And the weather was then playing up. As, and, and, and Finland seemed to rise to it in a way that Montenegro kind of, I say it's easy, but they lost their heads. Um, they, they, ex- yeah. Exactly there. I've got, I've got that yeah. same note that um, <laughs> Montenegro have, have started to losing their call. Yeah, yeah, not long after that. And like you said, the descent and the shouting and, yeah. and everything, it was... Um... And, and that continued into the second half as well. So. Well, my I, I made the comment towards the end of the first half that Ant-Man was playing really well. He was involved a lot and was being really effective down that, that left wing. I think we've seen over the last maybe three or four years now, I seem to notice there's been players down the wing that have linked up really well. And this where some of Finland's initial ex- exciting football were after the, mm-hmm. after the backer years, when we started to see some exciting football, it was down the left with, with Taylor or with Soeri or um, Hammerlein and back in the day, you know, linking up down there. So it was, um, I noticed it straight away that Antman was doing the same. Yeah, and, and I think what, what we're seeing from him that's different is he's driving, he's running with the ball. He's kind of taking it from, from a little bit deeper and running. And I think um, it's difficult when you've got a team with with a player like Temo Pulki, who, especially that First Nations League campaign and the Euro qualifying campaign, Finland were geared to play to his strengths. There were a lot of through balls, balls over the top for him to run onto. And that was kind of how Finland played. And I think now they're still trying to find alternative routes. What's the plan B? Um, Pookie's still scoring goals, but we're seeing now that, I'm not so touting out man as, Ant-Man as the future, but I sound like a Marvel comic here, but it's um, <laughs> we're, we're in that position where you've got someone who's running with the ball, which scares defenders, which Pookie can then use his intelligent movement to create the space to make those pockets for him to run into. And, and I think this is what we're going to look at when we've got all these young players who are playing in decent European leagues, getting regular minutes, because Ant-Man plays an awful lot for his club. Um, and I think bringing that to the national team and giving that extra outlet when you think now after this year, this calendar year for Finland, and we haven't even got to the goals yet, but it has been fairly mixed so far, I think it's fair mm-hmm. to say. Mm-hmm. And, um, and when you come into the final game, and you think about all we talked about after the First Nations League where Finland did well was momentum and how that took them into the Euro qualifying. Well, now, after a reasonable, not a great campaign, suddenly finish with a win, a 2-0 win away from home. Yes, Montenegro, but still, they're seeded higher than Finland. Mm. And you go away and you play well and you've got players coming through, got Chalmans looking really good as well. And all of a sudden, we've got Euro 2024 qualifying starting next year. They're going into it with momentum on a high. They've got two more matches before the end of the year against um, uh, Norway and Macedonia, isn't it? And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, you know, again, they're going into that with a little bit of confidence, a bit of momentum. And um, and yeah, and going into the second half, you know, these players were looking sharp and they were up for it because they saw a massive opportunity. And there was it was soon in the second half that the that well, both goals came really. Um, on the forty seventh minute, there was some nice two touch play involving several several players, um, and it came to Temu Pulki in in the in front of the goal, and he sort of just st- um, passed it sideways to Antman, who just stroked it home with the the inside of his right foot into the into the bottom bottom corner. A goal on his debut couldn't be couldn't be better. Way to cap yeah. off that performance. 
I think I, I read that he's the first Finland goal scorer to be born in this millennium. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I um, I, I'd imagine that Marcus Force was probably born in the late nineties, but um, yeah. So Antman is the the first Finland scorer from this century. It's a nice little nice little treat for him. But um, yeah. But yeah, it was um, it really was the way that that worked out. Um, it was a, a nicely worked out, and it was a really good finish as well because it was kind of the ball came to him. He was in a lot of space, um, but he made that space and mm. taken advantage of of the the room at the back. But I think um, to look at it kind of objectively, the way that the ball came across and I think the way that he wrong-footed the keeper and just curled it in nicely. Mm -hmm. It's just like, such a lovely composed finish from someone like that. It, it was, it was a, the, the right finish for a, a good team goal, wasn't it? Definitely. And, and he wasn't finished because not not six minutes later, uh, there was a, a deep cross from the from the right from Khan Kairinen. And it sort of looped off a defender up into the air, back to Oliver Antman at the back post. His cross then deflected off another defender up in the air to the to the the other back post. <laughs> and and Shellman came in with a with a header to get number two. And uh yeah, that was that was uh it really from as as far as as far as the scoring was going, and then the result was uh, was sealed. Yeah, I mean that, that after uh, that, that's the sort of goal that Finland concedes. Um, I think the game yeah. was it Bo Bosnia at home. I think they gave away a, a fairly sloppy goal like that from from let's say some defensive lapses yeah. uh, in that game. And and here Finland have taken the advantage of it. You've got Antman on his debut getting an assist, and and Chalman, who after his impressive cameo um, on Friday night, then came in and scored admittedly from about a yard and a half out, but. Yeah, he's got there. He's got on the fin He's got on the end of it, and you know this. This is again showing perhaps Canerva's ideas and thinking that Poe and Palo again didn't play, um, and the the idea of finding that partner for Puki. He's gone through a lot of people um, to get here, but if Chalman continues the way he is, then then there's no reason why he can't get a decent run. I mean, he was scoring for go goals for fun in Vekas Liga and he's gone to Poland and, and has started pretty well. Um, this is his second crack at, at playing abroad. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, getting another goal uh, for his country and, and hopefully then, again, just going into that that bit of confidence, that 2-0 cushion. Albeit it was still fairly early in the second half. It was what, the 53rd? Yeah, yeah. 53rd minute. Um, but, yeah, there was still still a fair bit of fun to come. The... Uh, the Montenegrin manager then got sent off. <laughs> he did, and that. and when it, it was it was a, was it the same incident that Richard Jensen was protecting the linesman from the anger of the Montenegro player? Yeah, and yeah. and it, it it was um I'd never really seen that before, like standing in and protecting the officials, and um and then the Montenegro manager was down somewhere near the corner flag. <laughs> and I don't, I, I couldn't, I didn't really see a replay, so I couldn't be sure if he'd gone down there to complain or if he'd gone down there to tell his players to calm down. Oh, I doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, he was far, far from home and he got sent sent further around the pitch and, mm. and off for an early bar. Yeah, um, he, he looked very anxious, although in that weather, he's probably just looking forward to getting in the dry and probably, they probably <laughs> had a, a sauna installed there, didn't they? Yeah, probably, and and there was one one other thing that I noted down um, that, because Montenegro had a couple of chances towards the end, and mm. um, on the eighty seventh minute, uh, Lukas Radetzky dropped a dropped a cross that fell to Montenegro to shoot, and and it was brilliantly blocked by Leo 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 Weisenen. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is uh, again. I'm not saying one incident shows the value of a team or, or anything, but it's just nice to be in the position where the guys, you know, they're, they're that desperate to look after that clean sheet. And we've seen that Fredetsky, you know, he's not kept that many recently. And I think because um, you know, for a variety of reasons, and I think just having that clean sheet to come away for him, for the defence, because again, without O'Shaughnessy, but you still got Ivanov and Weissen in there, are becoming very much the mainstays of that defence. So, um, so for them to come away with a clean sheet and and a really that kind of real fist pumping celebration as well, it was like yeah. it was like scoring a goal for them. So it was really nice yeah. to see. Yeah, it it was, and and to take nothing away from Luca because there were 
uh, you know, two or three really important saves that he made mm. during the game. So that was just the one time where he needed his defenders to help him out. So. Yeah, well, as I say, it's a, it's a team game and, and that was his 80th cap cap for Finland. So, uh, and, uh, and as we discussed on our WhatsApp group, Puki became the second most capped player for Finland for the men's team over the weekend. So uh, that, thanks to Ali for that stuff. But um, but yeah, so again, this you know we've still got some elder statesmen, but it's nice to see there is a blend. Yeah, of the yeah, young, and, the young and, old. and and I'm starting to think that this evolution of players coming along uh, is becoming a bit of a production line. Yeah, and and we've seen that the under twenty ones have done well to a point in the last few years, and they're now there is that clear. And we've talked about this before. There's this clear pathway. Oh, there is. There's this clear pathway from under 21s to senior teams and Ant-Man is, Ant-Man is the latest player to come through and has shown okay. scoring and assist on his debut huh? um, and we basically just got to the end of talking about the match and I was going to then just say a little bit about the um, Assam Yuko and the supporters out there and Keke's just managed to join us we, we weren't sure if he was going to get there um, so Keke, I'm going to unmute you. You were, you were making a bit of background noise. Um, so I'm going to unmute you and then we'll get your, we'll get your thoughts on, or get your perspective from, from in the stands. Hello, boys. Hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, we're not too bad. We're not too bad. I'm here with Ville. We're in... Um... <laughs> in the Where bar, we? by the looks of it. Zabliak. We're in Zabliak. So we've made our way from Podgorica to the... Montenegro Mountains, but yeah, um, I guess what you guys want to hear about is not our travels, but is what happened at the, at the game. But um, yeah, well, we've talked about the game itself. So tell us, what was your perspective of uh, or your experience as a as a travelling fan, and and how did you survive that water? It was wet, mate. It was it was, <laughs> it, was it was it was pretty wet. I mean, um, we had obviously we had we had a cracking time, great result. Um, yeah, it was uh, it, the SME Core boys done a fantastic job keeping the spirits up with everyone in the in the pouring rain, and um, yeah, I mean the stadium stadium it looks it looks like a cracking little stadium, but there was um, the roof could do with a bit of attention because uh, it was coming water, through the roof even. The water was the water was the water was missing in, mate. It was. Um, and the old the old Adidas trim trap didn't really hold up too much in the <laughs> in the rain. So, um, but ultimately, I mean, you know, is that even a game of football? I mean, I know you boys have just spoke about it, but is that even a game of football in those conditions? But Finland obviously did the business. Pot two, here we go. But yeah, it was. Uh, just want to give a big shout out to um, to Mika, the SME called Capo, who kept everyone singing and shouting for the whole ninety minutes and. Uh, and everyone who made the trip, it's like Montenegro is fantastic. It's a, it's a lovely country. We've had a really warm welcome from, from everybody. We stayed in some fantastic places, seen a bit of the coast, seen the mountains, seen the capital city. So, um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an experience. But, um, nice. but yeah, the, the game itself, it was, you know, when, it, when it's torrential rain like that and you're, you're marching down to the stadium. It's um, it can put a damper on things, but as I said, the SME Core boys really kept us in good spirits, kept us, kept us, kept us singing, and and kept the kept the momentum up right the way through. And um, yeah, we got the result, mate. So it was uh, it's all good. We certain we certainly did, and and we've uh, you'll you'll have to listen back. KK to the to the pod when it's published to hear what me and Rich. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm had flying to there tomorrow, so there's bound to be a delay. So I've got plenty of time to listen to the podcast. <laughs> okay, I'll try and get it out. Well, I'll try and get it out in time for you to travel back. Then I'll no, do my no. very best. <laughs> but thanks for thanks for joining us. We'll um we'll have a look forward to what's what's coming up next for Finland, and um, we'll see you in the next full length episode. And Villa, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Nice. We've got some Montenegro and red wine to drink, so I'll oh, see you God. soon, yeah? All right, then. Take care. Ooh, look at you, Cheers, posh. boys. <laughs> Cheers. Hepa. Bye. And with a wave of the finger across his smartphone, Keke disappears. He has um, swiped right on us. Yeah, it did look that way, didn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, 
so rich what you you talked a little bit about coefficients beforehand and mm. and we we also said how this was sort of a, a well both the games were six pointers but finland managed to get to get four points out of the last couple of games double their their points total and actually leapfrog leapfrog montenegro up into second place which was quite something um then yesterday you sent round um the the seedings for the euro 2024 qualifying and, and finland got themselves in pot two were those two things directly connected Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the seedings for the Euro qualifying are taken from the uh, Nations League rankings. Uh, that's all they're taken from, nothing, no, nothing else. So the fact, and going into after the, the win on Monday, uh, Finland still needed a couple of snookers uh, yeah. in order to guarantee a place in the, the second seeding pot, which I don't think Finland have ever been in. Maybe the not. second, I'm not sure. Um, but... Um, but yeah, a couple of results went their way. Basically, Sweden didn't beat Slovenia. Um, Norway lost. Ireland won. Ukraine didn't beat Scotland. So it was one of those kind of they needed a certain ways, things to fall in a certain way. And generally, they did well enough for Finland to, to scrape in into pot two. Um, so because of the way that in that division, because Russia weren't involved, so they struck off the results against the teams in the bottom and because Finland got most of their points from a team that didn't finish bottom of the group, that actually helped them. And, um, and yeah, so the, uh, the draw for the next round of Euro qualifiers is going to be on the 9th of October. Uh, Finland will be in pot two. And then it just depends on uh, whether they'll be in a group of five or a group of six. Uh, it depends on who their top seed is because of the Nations League finals. But, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's an achievement in itself just to be there. It means they can't get... Bosnia again. Yeah, God. That's, that's something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they can't get perennial opponents, Wales, um, as well. But it also means they can't get England, they can't get France. Or Scotland. Uh, so or Scotland. So yeah. So there's I mean, no easy, no easy trips for you, UK based boys, anyway. No, it's a bit of a shame. Obviously, uh, we, we jest every time a draw comes around that uh, it'd be nice for Finland to play England. It's been uh, 21 years now, but um but then it turns out that they could play in the next Nations League in two years' time because England got relegated. So um, yeah, it would be nice. Very good. We could have we could have a almost com almost completely Nordic di uh, group with Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Faroe Islands, and Estonia. How does that sound? Mm, that'd be uh, fairly local for. For those travelling fans, or? it certainly would, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it won't. You know, it won't be anything like that. It'll be almost the complete opposite. No, and um, and they'll get you know the the fixtures are being again condensed in uh, I think five match days next year. Yeah, or five five rounds next yeah. year. So um, I mean, we we did just beforehand that perhaps once the fixtures are confirmed, we'll have to have a uh, and have a live Finnish football show get together for one of the games. Hopefully, a, a good game in the summer in good weather. And yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Not a nine forty-five kickoff on a Tuesday again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they always seem to be five nine forty-five kickoffs. It was. Mm. Uh, it kind of spoils the 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 rest of the night. By the time you get back to back to the <laughs> town centre, I'm I'm ready for bed mm. anyway at my age. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so I guess we'll be we'll probably come back sometime after that draw. That's only in about ten days' time. But maybe maybe wait for that to take place and. And see how the, the the final sort of stages of the Vacas League are looking, and we'll get back with a, a full length show. Yeah, I think um, by then that the the ninth of October is a week, so the Vacas League finishes, for want of a better word, on on the sixteenth. So uh, right. yeah, by then we'll be well into. Well, we'll probably have relegated and champions by then already. But uh, hey ho. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's have subject. a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um we will come we will, we will maybe in the middle of october be able to look back at the significance of asigor three cooks one offside all of perfect, them. perfect way to top and tail episode of the Finnish football show um rich thanks for joining me and well, um, speak to you again soon listener until the next episode of the Finnish football show goodbye you've been listening to the Finnish football show you can find us online at finishfootballshow.com. 
Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter at Explore Finland, at FC Suomi, at Escape to Suomi, at Kekimulu. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.